Like, look at that. Like, come on. Like, come. I, 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 I. Let's do a roller set. Oh my God. We are sitting down for like a real hair tutorial right now. Let's just take a moment to acknowledge this moment, all right? But we're gonna quickly move on because we are not in the past, we are in the present. So let's get into it. So in this video, I'm giving y'all all the tea, the play by play. There are a few key aspects of this process. When you don't do them, your roller set doesn't come out right, even if you follow like the general instructions. So to start our process, we're going to do a really, really good cleanse. So let's talk shampoo process first. Whenever I'm coming out of a roller set or going into a roller set, I'm using two shampoos. First, I'm gonna use a clarifying shampoo. So this time I'm gonna use the Olaplex Bond Maintenance Shampoo. Then I'm going to use the Mono's Hair Ultimate Hydrator Shampoo. This collection just relaunched and I'm so excited to use it, so I had to include it in this video. Once I'm done with these two, I'm going to do a deep treatment. Now, you can really use any deep treatment that you want. The only thing you wanna make sure you have is a protein and moisture balance happening. If you're trying to create a protein moisture balance in your hair, you wanna be kind of aware of where your hair is at. So if your hair feels super, super soft and it doesn't really hold a curl pattern or it's not really defined and it doesn't have a lot of structure to it, you need more protein. So if you're in that category, I would suggest this deep treatment. This is the Afogee two-step. This is old school, y'all. This is real, this is, if you know, you know, okay? So this comes in the little two pack where you get the conditioner and the, two, the protein solution, or you could just buy the protein solution like this. But today I'm using a deep treatment like this one, which is going to have protein in it as well as being super moisturizing. And because I know my good sis Mo, she made sure that this was gonna be the highest quality on both sides. I will also be incorporating my steamer today. This is available on Amazon or really any beauty supply that you could find. And if you don't have a steamer, no worries. The way you can steam your hair without having a steamer is to simply put that treatment on, put a plastic shower cap on your head, wrap your head in a towel, and go do whatever you need to do around the house for a couple hours. The heat from your head is gonna start creating a steamed environment in your hair, and that will be a good enough amount of heat to really get that treatment to do what it needs to do. Okay, I'm done talking now. I'm about to hop in the shower. So stay tuned for this to get all the details, the breakdown, the Da, 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 the step-by-step -step on how to get the perfect roller set. I've got all my things right back here. So let's get into the hair products that we're gonna be using today. First, you're gonna have some water and make sure you have a spray bottle because you're gonna wanna use this water generously as you're putting the rollers in. Then you're gonna want a lightweight leave-in. This can be a spray leave-in conditioner. This can be a cream leave-in conditioner. Today, I'm using this one from Olaplex because I use the Olaplex shampoo. I want it to kind of like stay in the collection. Another really popular leave-in that you can use is the Masani Miracle 25 spray leave-in conditioner. I see a lot of hairstylists use that as their leave-in. Then you're gonna wanna use some sort of foam now this is the great debate of it all what foam should you use on your hair when you're trying to do a roller set these are my top three foams to you number one is going to be the influence honey and almond styling foam second is going to be the foam we're using today which is the compositions foam from Design Essentials. Both of those foams give you a really light hold. So when you brush it through after you've rolled your hair, it literally feels like there's no foam or any sort of cast at all. The third option is gonna be Lotta Body because I can't do a roller set video and not talk about Lotta Body. Super old school, tried and true, so you can totally use Lotta Body. Now the next product you add in here is optional. Having a heat protector in this mix is always gonna be better to have than not have. So so for today's style, I'm actually gonna be using a dry spray heat protectant. This is the one from Heritage by Mindy. And I'll be using this before we go into the heat styling portion of this video. Also, I wanted to note, 
If you want to keep this style silicone free, because that, that is a possibility, the only products you'll want to use are going to be water, this compositions foam, because it does not have silicone in it, and a silicone free serum oil like this one from Living Proof. This is the Living Proof Vanishing Oil. You can totally use those three things and achieve a great result. It's just gonna be a matter of your hair type as far as how smooth and how long the style will last and how much humidity you're around. Let me put my hair up. Now let's talk about tools. There is a great debate about which rollers to use when you're doing a roller set. I really enjoy using tension rollers, which are these. These tension rollers have little teeth on them. So when you're pulling your hair in the roller, there's something to catch your hair. I have two sizes. I use this size, which is a one inch, and I use this size, which is a 1.25 or 1.5 inch diameter. I'm not sure, but you can see the size difference here. There's not a huge size difference, but there is a size difference. But if your hair is shorter than mine, you will wanna use these, and then there's another step below this, which is these. This yellow roller is like a half inch roller, so you can see the size difference between those two here. If your hair is short in certain areas, you're only gonna be able to wrap it around this, and you would rather wrap it fully around a small one and then brush it out later than to try to use a big one like this and it not stay because your hair can't go around the entire diameter of the roller. But for me today, I'm using these two. And before y'all kill me about these rollers versus the magnetic rollers, which are the ones that I usually link because before I even go there, let me let me tell y'all this. So these are very difficult to find, okay? That's the only caveat, is that these are hard to find because these are like really only seen in like old school hair salons or like Dominican hair salons, Ethiopian hair salons still use these tension rollers, but they're really hard to find. So you can either find them randomly at a beauty supply store or there's a website that I found them at down below that I've linked in the description. And there are a few sellers on Amazon that I've also linked. I try to link what's mostly accessible because obviously many of y'all are looking for the same thing. The sellers on Amazon sometimes have these and sometimes don't. And also sometimes are misleading with what size rollers you're gonna get. So I don't like to send people to Amazon all the time for these rollers because it's just kind of unpredictable. You kind of got to take a chance. So for me, I've done that before where I've actually bought more of these white ones off Amazon, but it's, it, it's, it's, you know, purchase at your own risk, right? There's also a website. I can't remember the name right now. I will put it on screen and down below, but there's a stylist that also carries these rollers on her site. She carries these rollers and she also carries the actual hairpins that go in here. My plan originally was to do this particular video with a magnetic roller since I know those are gonna be the ones that most of y'all have but I changed my mind because I still wanted to honor like the original true way that I do my roller sets which is with these and then in a future video I'll probably grab the magnetic rollers and show y'all how I do it with those as well if y'all want to but truly there's not gonna be much of a difference in your results based on what roller you use okay it's really about the technique that you do so with the magnetic rollers, the only difference is that you don't have these grooves here. You don't have these teeth. It's a smooth surface, which personally I feel like if you're a beginner in rolling hair, it's a little hard to do by yourself. Like I think rolling hair with the magnetic rollers on somebody else is actually easier than trying to do it yourself. So if anything, if you get the magnetic rollers, maybe practice on somebody else, whether it be your mom, your sister, your daughter, somebody, so you can actually get a rhythm to like how to roll correctly and then try to do it on yourself with the magnetic rollers if you are struggling with the rolling process because a lot of people struggle with that part and just get frustrated because there's a lot of things that can go wrong 
when you're rolling your hair. So stay tapped in with this video because I'm really gonna walk y'all through all of this stuff so that you don't fall into some of those frustrating pitfalls that may happen as you're trying to learn how to do this style yourself. So as far as the rest of the tools that you're gonna need, you're also gonna need a wide tooth comb or one of those scalp brushes, something with very little teeth on it so that you can comb your section of hair pull it tightly and roll it on the roller. You're also gonna need some pins or clips to place the roller. You can use long duck clips like these or you can use long metal pins like this. These are the ones that are available on the stylist website that I mentioned before, but a pack of these is like $50. So just be aware of that. It's kind of pricey, but these do give you the best result when it comes to getting your rollers to stay in place. Like these are exact because it's gonna anchor that roller like this on your head. So you see how it goes straight through there like that? So that's gonna hold your roller exactly in the right place. But if you don't have these, a very close second is gonna be the duck clips, okay? And when you do the duck clips, you can get a pretty good position on them with just the clips and then anchoring them together when you got them on your head. So you can kind of see how this is. You can also clip them together like this and that will hold them in place as well on your head. You can also air dry if you want, but it would literally take all day long for you to air dry. So for me, I prefer to use a hooded dryer that's a standalone dryer because those also tend to have the sort of wattage that's going to get your hair drier faster. The hooded dryers that sit on a desk don't always have the same watt power as the standing ones. And that's something that you can pay attention to when you're choosing what kind of hooded dryer to use. The hooded dryers at the hair salons are gonna be really high watts because they're professional level hooded dryers. So that's why at the salon, you may be able to sit under the dryer for an hour. But if you try to do the same thing at home, it may require an hour and a half or two hours with the little hooded dryer or you know, dryer attachment to your blow dryer that you might be using. It's just gonna take longer. And speaking of blow dryers, so this is an optional tool to have on hand for when things may go awry, okay? So if you are somebody who can't seem to get their hair dry enough under the, dry, the hooded dryer, get you one of these, okay? This is a blow dry brush. There's lots of different ones on the market. This is just the one that I prefer to use because it's, just awesome, it's so good. And I always keep this on hand when I'm doing a roller set because sometimes I may have a piece or two that's not fully dry, like it's still a little, not all the way there yet. I'll just take this and do that section a few times. And if you're somebody who doesn't wanna use a flat iron at all, you could literally blow out your section and put that roller right back in and let it set for a while. So it's just a matter of like what you prefer to do. And of course, next I'll mention the flat iron that I use. This is a one inch ceramic flat iron from Eep Heat. This is my favorite flat iron to use. When I say flat iron and I talk flat iron in this video, I'm not doing a silk press, okay? This is not a silk press tutorial. When we use this flat iron, it's always and only on 360 degrees and it's only one pass. That's it. If you gotta do more than one pass, just know you're increasing your level of heat damage at that point. So for me, for my hair, even for my daughter's hair, who has more of a, I would say 3C hair texture, but her hair is really fine, but it's very dense still, and her curl pattern is a lot more coiled than mine is. I use the same level of degrees on her after I did her roller set to just lock in the style. Because for some people and for some hair textures, your hair will look good when you take the rollers out and do everything without the flat iron, but 20 minutes, two hours later, it'll start to poof up and your curls will revert. So for me, I've realized that every time I've skipped the flat iron process, my hair is reverted. So we're gonna talk about more of that later. I just wanna mention, have a flat iron handy just in case. And lastly, you need hair net hair scarf, okay? So the hair net is what we're gonna use to keep our rollers intact before we go under the hooded dryer. And then you need a silk scarf to sleep in.
So let's get into the actual tutorial part of this video. So as you can see, I'm saturating my hair with lots of water and you can add water as you go through this part. You want to make sure that you are using your rollers as a measure for how big to use your sections. And I'm using my leave-in here and adding it to each section before I actually apply my mousse or my foam to each section. And really you don't need a lot of foam to do this style it's really about if you want more hold use more foam but if you want a softer feel use more water when you're actually rolling your hair you want to make sure you're holding the roller top to your head which means without any give now this is why i really like these tension rollers because the teeth actually grip the hair a bit more than magnetic rollers if you have magnetic rollers it just takes some practice to get a hang of this once I've got my roller in place, I'm just using these big clips to actually clip them together and these will not move. Now, since we're here, I'm gonna talk about placement of your rollers. I play with different placement of my rollers all the time. It's really a personal preference on how you wanna place them. You just wanna make sure that you're getting about the same amount of hair on each roller and making sure that you're not putting too much hair on a roller because that will extend the drying time. Just something to be mindful of. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete the rest of my hair, but I did wanna add this. So once I've rolled my hair, I actually use the net that I just showed y'all to secure my rollers on my head. You don't have to use a net, but it does help keep all the rollers in place as just extra security when you go underneath the hair dryer. But I just wanted to add that in because it is something that I do when I do my roller sets. So this is me after sitting under the hooded dryer for about an hour. And usually that's all my hair needs, but I still, with the hooded dryer that I have, don't get a fully even dry every time. But I'm gonna show you in the next clip how I solve that problem for those pieces that don't get fully dry under the hooded dryer. So I'm gonna show y'all real quick how quickly your roller set will start changing on you <laughs> if you don't do this way of doing your roller set. So earlier I showed y'all everything was all smooth and pretty. And now look, we've got a lot of texture happening and it's still smooth and shiny, but it's already reverting back to my curl pattern, right? So that's why I really encourage y'all to do things this route because I've gone through the, <laughs> the disappointment of trying to not involve a flat iron. I just have tried and it didn't work out before when I tried. So, you know, to each his own, but this is what will happen if you don't really lock in your style. So as you can see, I've got my, my rollers back in and they're just loosely in right now. And so I'm gonna continue blowing out these sections. And when I say blow out, it's really not even a blowout because it doesn't take much at all. I might blow it out for maybe five to 10 seconds per section and do one pass on the flat iron and that's it. get my root maybe a couple times, but the rest of my hair is definitely one pass only. I promise we're almost finished. <laughs> Gonna take these rollers down real quick.
we are finally done. <laughs> like, look at that. Look at this. Like, come on. Like, come, I, 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 I don't know what else to say. Like, other than it's worth it. Okay, this whole process is worth it because do you see what's happening? Like, I haven't even, let me brush out the back. Let me brush it. And look, I'm taking a paddle brush, y'all. I'm taking a paddle brush to my hair. So y'all can really see that like, the reason why this roller set is so good is because you're not gonna lose your curls when you brush it. They gonna come, they gonna pop right back up how you want them to pop up. Because you've got the hold from the mousse that's giving your hair what it needs. Like, like look at her. Look at her. Like, come on. Let's toss her to the side. Like, and I've got postpartum hair loss, okay? So like my edges are looking a little thin. So I don't really like wearing my hair to this side, but even to this side, she is giving. But yeah, y'all, this is it. This is the roller set. This is where we're finished for today. We can go live life, do whatever we need to do. But before we get going, I will add in a segment next about how to wear your hair at night. Okay, how are you going to sleep with this roller set? I got you. So keep on watching to the next part of this series and I'll show you how to sleep with this and preserve this style for at least two weeks. At least that's how much time I can get out of a roller set is about two weeks before I feel the need to wash my hair. All right, y'all. Until next time, I will see you in my next video. I love y'all. Take care. Any comments, concerns, questions, put them down below. Until next time, I will see you in my next video. Bye.